In this video, we will study Chapter 2 of Part 1 of the book Logo Design Love, where David Airy answers the question, why is branding important? To answer this question, he shows us how helpful it is to have a good story to tell about design, he tells us the story behind logos like the Royal Parks, Star of Bethnal Green, Harry Potter 7, Kellogg's, and Amanda Marsden. So, let's start. Hello, and welcome again to my Take 5 video series, where we have fun with graphic design books. I hope you've enjoyed my first video in this series. In this video, we are going to continue reading the book Logo Design Love, and in part 1 of that book, David Airy begins chapter 2 with the question, why is branding important? And to answer that question, he tells us that it's important, because people often choose products based on their perceived value, rather than their actual value. But, what might perceived value mean? In Cambridge Dictionary, perceived value is defined as, the value of a product, based on how much customers want or need it, rather than on its real price. In his article titled What is Customer Perceived Value? Neil Kokomuller says, Customer perceived value is the notion, that the success of a product or service, is largely based on whether customers believe it can satisfy their wants, and needs. In other words, when a company develops its brand, and markets its products, customers ultimately determine how to interpret and react to marketing messages. Companies spend significant time, researching the market, to get a sense of how customers think, and feel. To simplify things, David Airy says, think about the celebrity who drives an Aston Martin instead of a Skoda, which is continually ranked car of the year, in many European countries, and delivers much better mileage at a significantly cheaper price. Sure Skoda is the logical choice, but it's Aston Martin's identity, which conjures images of luxury and status, that usually clinches the sale. With the right branding, businesses can increase their product's perceived value, establish relationships with their customers, that span ages and borders, and nurture those relationships into a lifelong bond. David Airy thinks that good brands are those with good stories. He says, of course, it always helps to have a good story to tell. Your job as a designer is to find the story, and tell it wisely. After understanding the meaning of the customer perceived value, and its relationship with the brand, David Airy tells us the stories behind some successful logos. But before we continue, if you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up, and share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Will Keith Kellogg, invented wheat flakes and then corn flakes, spawning a breakfast cereal revolution, and helping to develop an industry that has since become one of the most successful on the planet. Kellogg developed marketing campaigns that were years ahead of their time. He used modern four-color print advertising, in magazines, and on billboards, at a time when other companies were still thinking in black and white. And to distinguish Kellogg's corn flakes, from those manufactured by other cereal companies, he made sure all of his boxes bore the legend, beware of imitations, none genuine without this signature, W.K. Kellogg. Kellogg, still uses the same trademark signature, that it has been using since 1906, on the front of every pack of cereal, but these days, the signature is a red, stylized version. This consistency, built a level of trust and repeat business, with consumers through the years, which has helped establish Kellogg as the world's leading cereal manufacturer. When you close your eyes, and picture McDonald's, what do you see? Golden arches, perhaps. For those products and services that have a strong brand identity, it's the identity that people often think of first, rather than the product itself. Think of Microsoft, Apple, Ford, and Target. Chances are good, that without even showing you the logos, you'd have a fairly good picture of how they look. Granted, a huge marketing budget is necessary to achieve the recognition rates of such organizations, but it's important to put on your best face. Iconic designer Gerard Huerta, born and raised in Southern California, has been producing well-known identities for decades, 
including those for the likes of Time, Walden Books, and the Type Directors Club. You are probably just as familiar, if not more familiar, with these logos as you are with the products or services themselves. By summer 2008, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter book series had sold more than 400 million copies and was translated into 67 languages. So, when New York design and creative firm ID29 was chosen in 2007 to create the campaign and associated identity elements for the seventh book, it was clear that its work would be seen by millions or even billions. Doug Barto, design director and principal at ID29 said, we came up with a distinctive campaign aesthetic, based on a central typographic element, that we could use across all different media from printed posters and bookmarks, to rich media and online applications. That makes sense, think about the traffic passing through Times Square. Most people don't have time to be reading from billboards, so a symbol is much more fitting. Using a simple mark to identify the campaign, allowed those taking even the briefest of glimpses, to recognize news of the book release. Bardo said, the results were phenomenal, with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, selling 8.3 million copies in the United States, within the first 24 hours of its release. The Queen of England, head of state and head of a nation, understands the importance of brand identity. Moon Brand, a branding and communications consultancy based in London, needed final approval from Her Majesty on this design for the Royal Parks. Moon Brand director, Richard Moon, said, the leaves we chose to use in this logo, are from indigenous British trees, found in the Royal Parks. The logo tells the story of the parks using their own language, leaves, and deftly portrays the relationship between the park system and the British Crown with one clever picture. This clarity helped the project through to completion. Moon Brand was told that approval from the Queen can take months, but it came back within 24 hours. To sell products internationally, your brand has to speak a lot of different languages. Fortunately, easy to identify, symbols need no translation. Recognizable regardless of culture or language, symbols enable companies to cross language barriers, compete globally, and maintain brand consistency across a wide range of media. Dennis Kovach, Bunch Creative Director said, the symbol had to be a star in some guise, so the design team began playing around with the traditional five-pointed star. All too soon, they realized that it was too commonplace. Kovach said, we figured a five-pointed star would always be reminiscent of national flags, communism, and pagan rituals, Rob Starr, already had a large following through his Mulletover Club night, which brought to mind the expression, follow the star. He wanted the pub to be a shining beacon in Bethnal Green, attracting people from far and wide. The star of Bethlehem with seven points and a long tail, presented itself as a way forward. While Kovach and his team produced many possible variations, it was a simple thick outlined star that was chosen, not only because it was a brilliant design, but also because it could be used as a template and altered, to suit any application or theme. Bunch's project is a classic lesson in versatility. When designing brand identity, you must always ask yourself whether your logo can adapt to different media. Bizar, a design studio in England, created this logotype with its customized typeface for Amanda Marsden, a lifestyle salon and spa based in Devon, England. The designers then extrapolated the letters OM from the design, which represent the client's initials, and form the word OM to create a contemporary minimalist wordmark. The word was then integrated into the various phrases used to promote Marsden's service, such as OM Beautiful, OM Relaxed, and the OM Gifted Card. Not every brand name will suit such a language-centric approach, but keep it in mind, because it's one more tool, in your design arsenal, that you can employ when the time is right. We often do judge books by their covers, whether it's fair or not. And that's why the perceived value of a service or product is usually greater than the actual one. 
The same visual identity seen time and again builds trust, and trust keeps customers coming back for more. It's kind of like putting a face to a name. Logos help people remember their experiences with companies. You might practice making these very important points during initial discussions with your clients as a way of driving home the importance of choosing you as their designer. In the end, we can summarize the second chapter of this book with the following points. People often choose products based on their perceived value rather than their actual value. Your job as a designer is to find the story and tell it wisely. Using none genuine without this signature through the years has helped establish Kellogg as the world's leading cereal manufacturer. A logoless company is a faceless man. Using a simple mark to identify the campaign allowed the work to be seen by millions. This clarity helped the project through to completion. Symbols transcend boundaries. Identity design could be a part of our language. Last but not least, if you like to read a whole graphic design book in a short time, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends. Thanks and see you next time.